So I'm going to go to the church and play it on my own. We'll give it about three more minutes, guys, three or four more minutes, just to let get people on, okay? Hold it, I want to call it. I'm going to turn the bucket out of that cell. We can leave some of the water in the wrong time. Yeah, I want to. In the wrong time. Or you can leave them out. I don't care. I don't want to email it. Okay. Okay. Get, grab a bucket. I can leave them with water. Are we supposed are we supposed to have our webcams on or no? No. We don't need to see you, Tom. Yeah. Really no. no. <laughs> well, I I have a I have my own right on board here, so I was gonna I was gonna uh oh boy. my webcam on. You can text me a picture if you need to. I, I wanna see Tom. <laughs> I want to see all. I want to see all you guys. What's this go-to meeting <laughs> on TV? On TV, you get to see everybody. We're not quite that advanced yet. We'll get there. Is the uh, is the chat actually functional? The chat is functional. Yeah. You can yes, just know I know to people secretly. Oh, somebody answered. <laughs> it's working. It's working. It's working. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and. Uh, so, so nobody tell Brad. Nobody tell Bradley about it. Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> nobody. Uh, let's go ahead and come together. Um, first thing I would like you all to do is put your phone on mute. Um, so we can get through this, um, and the I'm just going to give you an idea of how this is going to go. This is this is a discussion regarding the 2017 rules changes, and we're going to do that first since they are rules changes. These are not uh, so we're going to do that first, and then we're going to do we're going to talk about the proposed tournament conditions that uh, we are hopefully going to be using at the clinics uh, for the fall. Um, I would ask everybody to keep your questions until the end. Um, I just, you know, we can't, I don't want to get off topic. And I would also ask that we have questions regarding these conditions um, or rules, not opinions. This is not an opinion forum. Um, I'm going to read you the rules and explain them to the best of my ability for what they say and how they are going to be interpreted. And uh, if you have a question about that, that's that's fine, but you know whether you like them or not. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of discussion. That's this is not the forum for that. So, um, so that's that. So anyway, um, and also, I, you know, we're all sitting here being able to be on a phone and uh, and you know wherever we are. I think you know might not be a bad idea. Just. Take a take a moment and think about any of your friends that are in Florida that are trying to get out of the way of a hurricane. So um, I know there's a you know obviously our offices are down there and you know pretty spooky times. So anyway, um, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to go into the rules changes for 2017. Um, the rules committee and the board of governors. 
pass these rule changes, um, and I sent you, I sent everybody these changes yesterday. Um, I apologize for the format. Um, as of yesterday, they had not been formatted for for rules. They had not been formatted. Um, go into the book, so this is the best format that we had, okay? Um, and, but really when it comes to, there are some, there are some rules in, in the, in the upper part of the rules section regarding helmets and stuff like that, but that doesn't really pertain to us from the II standpoint because what they're trying to do in the outdoor game is try to get everybody that is around the field, um, you know, like grooms and stuff, anybody that gets on a horse to be wearing a helmet, which I think is a great idea, but anyway, that's for another day. And But we don't have that problem in the II because everybody that, you know, rides rides a horse in the arena, you know, before a game, after a game, um, always has a helmet on anyway. So um, that's no new news to us, I would say. Everybody agree with me on that? I would think so. Um, yeah. Okay, so... Really, the, the two main things are actually it's a combination of it's under Rule 14, um, improper play and unsportsmanlike conduct. And I'm just going to read this off, and uh, I will kind of explain it behind it. Um, 14A, delay of game, uh, player, player in possession of the ball, marked approximately two horse lengths or less by an opposing player, must keep moving. Did the player in possession of the ball either stop or reduce his speed to a walk or walking speed? The player, and in parentheses, and or any member of the player's team, will have five seconds to either hit away or run with the ball. An infraction of this rule will result in a penalty against the team in possession of the ball. Now, we all remember a couple of years ago we put delay of game into the arena rules. This just takes it another another step that instead of it being a bowl in, it will now be a it will now be a penalty shot for the other team going in the other direction. And with the five seconds is is that if you slow the ball down, the umpire the um the umpire or umpires that are there will start running basically in their head a five second clock. Um, you know one, two, three four, five. And in that time, you either have to hit away or, as we say with the lay game, accelerate with the ball, okay? And if you decide to leave it for another player and you are still at a stop and the other player comes behind, the five seconds does not start over. That, that, that player that it comes in behind is included in that five-second time frame. So, if you decide to leave it, if you're holding the ball and you decide to leave it at three or four seconds for another player, more than likely they're not going to get there in time to hit the ball, and it's going to be a delay of game penalty. Okay? Um, so that is... I have a question. Hey, Bradley, I have a question. Can I ask a question? When the player that quick. leaves the ball, when the player that leaves the ball with five seconds, takes the other player that was within two strides, uh, three strides away from the ball, does that second player now have all the time he wants, right? That is correct. Has to be defended. Okay. Um, Got it. All right. Um, all right, and then anybody, and you know what, I, I, I said let's keep the questions, but you know, a question like that, thank you, Tom, for a very short question, that was great. Um, uh, I'll take two or three questions after each one because I know everybody's going to forget by the end. So I'll just change that a little bit, okay? Um, all right, the next part of this, if you go down to uh, it's G, I think it's, I mean it's G, yeah, it's, it's G, uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. Um, unsportsmanlike conduct is now being changed to be more in accordance with the, how uh, the outdoor rules are, um, are being called uh, in terms of unsportsmanlike conduct. I mean, you know, we've always gone, you know, the red flag system in the outdoor is always the same as 
you know, the indoor does the same thing. Well, now we're changing the disciplinary system in the outdoor at all levels. This is not just an international rule thing. It's being changed at all levels for 2017, so we're bringing this into the arena as well. Um, and I'll just read along with me. Unsportsmanlike conduct, including but not limited to the following, shall not be permitted. Uh, appealing to the umpires or officials. Unwelcome talking to the umpire. Vulgar or abusive language. Disrespectful attitude toward any official player, coach, or spectator. Arguing with umpires or other officials. Inappropriate behavior by any member of a team organization. Delay of game for a player or mount. Unnecessary tack timeout. Uh, swing them out in a windmill with or helicopter type fashion as in appealing for a foul. Dangerous riding as described in Rule 13. Improper use of the mount as described in Rule 15. <coughs> Rough or abusive play as described in rules. Deliberate, delivery striking another player or mount. Excessive violation of the whipping rule. Hitting the ball after the whistle or horn has sounded. Uh, intentionally striking a ball during play in such a way that it may cause injury to a spectator or official or damage property. These are all pretty much in line with what the red flag uh, constitutes. Um, the only two that I would say would be uh, newer to people is the dangerous riding in terms of uh, the dangerous riding and the improper use of mallet or dangerous use of mallet. Um, you know, if you make a bump, if, you know, if you if you if you're in the arena and you make a bump that you know causes a horse to jostle or a horse to almost go down, normally we normally in the past it's just been a penalty, a severe penalty. Now it's a yellow flag. Okay, um, this is and like this is exactly what they're doing. We're doing in the outdoor game as well. Um, if you know if you know a swing into a horse, of course you guys already have a penalty for. Um, hitting your horse, but depending on the severity of the hit to the horse, if it's a, if it's an incidental thing where you, you know, you, you miss a ball and it's not a big impact on the horses themselves, it will still be a foul. But if it is, if it's a pretty severe hit, it will constitute a yellow flag. That's going to be umpire discretion, guys. And um, you know, I think we can use our good judgment to determine which one is. What what is necessary? So it's you know that's that's that. Now the procedure for this is is as follows. Yellow flag is you have you get one yellow flag. It's a penalty. It can either be moved up one spot or based on the severity of it, you know it could be moved up more than one spot. Okay. You come back and get a second yellow flag for one of these things you uh, are put into what is called the penalty box. And the penalty box, is, and you are in the penalty box for two minutes of playing time. Now, um, there's been some discussion in the last 24 hours about how to, how to do the procedure of the player going out of the penalty box. Um, the rules committee is going to discuss this and also, if it's not determined by the time some of you go to Virginia, uh, the coaches and the umpire instructor and everybody else involved is going to make a, a group decision of how to handle that. Okay? And the reason being is that if these rules are going to go in for 2017, um, you know, it's my opinion that we need, to start, we need to start working with this now so everybody's ready for it. Um, and so, and then of course, as and in the conjunction after that, after the penalty box, uh, the third flag is a yellow flag that turns into a red flag, and then you are out for the remainder of that game and the next game. So um, it is. Uh, so that's. You know, I it's you know this we're we're tightening up on discipline and all aspects of polo. Um, I hope that in the uh, in the II we, we we have a little more respect than the the guy the high goalers, I guess. So, um, but uh, but that's what's happening. So all you umpires that are on this call, 
Um, especially you guys that are going to Virginia, I would I would highly suggest you go get a, a yellow flag. I mean, you know, either a yellow flag or a, a yellow towel of some size that will fit into your back pocket will suffice um, along with your red flag. Okay? Any questions on that? Uh, I have a question, Bradley. Uh, you can finish this, but I would like to back up to ask you one question about the delay of, delay of game. Okay. Well, let's let's. Uh, anybody have any questions regarding the regarding the uh, yellow? All right, Tom. What's your question about the delay again? Uh, as we know, if, if we you know this is kind of an outdoor language. If we slow in the corner, we all hook up with each other. We slow down to what is oftentimes a walk trying to work the ball around the corner with someone riding you against the wall. Um, that obviously is a dog in the arena. So I'm assuming walking speed in certain situations is not considered slowing the game in that certain is, corner that situations. Is for, that is correct, Tom. And, and you got to remember, we also have pace of play along the wall to kind of help along with that as well. You know? So, I mean, it's... I understand. Yeah, I mean, if you're being, if you're being blocked, if you're being bumped into the wall, I mean, if you're being bumped and not give, really given an opportunity to go forward, obviously that's not going to be. Uh, it's not. Or if you've got somebody in front of you blocking the right away, um, you know, if they don't clear, it's obviously going to be a foul. But um, it's, you know, if you have an avenue to play polo, you do so. Okay. Does that answer your question? If you're, in the, if, if yes, and if you're in the corner walking. Everybody runs down, checks up in the corner, and they're actually walking. Somebody's trying to hustle up there. But if you're walking and not, but you are defended, somebody's right alongside of you, that's that's kind of normal play in your mind, correct? That's correct, yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Okay. A que question for you. Who keeps the time of the person in the penalty box? Um, that, is, that, that is actually... Uh, a discussion I would I mean and I'm open to it I think the the tournament manager you know but sometimes the tournament manager is not actually watching the game <clears throat> you're gonna have to do it with whoever's watching the clock you could have two clocks one for the penalty box one for the actual game clock because tournament managers half the time are redoing wraps and stuff all out of the out of the arena so I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it on them because then now you're taking away from their other duties. Just my point. About a, yeah. Whoever, 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 time, if whoever's keeping time, then we'll have to do it. And that's just the way it's going to. That's that'll have to be the way to do it. So, I mean, it'll be easy. Obviously, it'll be pretty simple with a visible scoreboard. Um, but. Uh, you know, I know that every arena and every site that we go to doesn't have a visible scoreboard, so um, but it has to be the timekeeper. So, how how will it be simple? Huh? How will it be simple if you have a visible scoreboard? Because a visible scoreboard is going to time the game, not time the two minutes. Yeah, but the fact of the matter is that if let's say you get a Let's say you get a second. Let's say you get a second yellow, and you go into the penalty box at three fifty-seven, Lou. And then you get, and you you know that you got that that you, as a timer, you know that player has to go back in at one fifty-seven. If it's at the end of the chucker, you just have to do a little bit of math to determine what's two minutes of playing time. That's all. That's to me. That's, you know, the, that's the other smart. alternative would be the third man. The third man could have a separate clock, and then could uh, uh, could tell the umpires on the field, depending on however the pro process is determined to let that player back in, maybe the third man should do it so the other one's not distracted. Good there's, idea. There's, no, there's, there's different ways to do it, too. but manager should not do yeah. it, and lose, to lose point, you don't have two clocks up there, so you're not, it's not like basketball, and you might have, you could have you know, two different timers going on, so, I, so maybe we need the third man to make sure that they always have a clock stopwatch available to them to, to address it and put it on the third man to do it. Hey, ask an ignorant question, but how do you guys picture the penalty box 
working with a lot of the arenas that don't really have easy in and out? It's basically going to be wherever the in and out the in and out uh, entrance is going to be. I mean that is that is going to be the the easiest way to do it. You know, outside of the entrance to the arenas. But um, as I said, you know, it's not the question of going into the penalty box right now. It's how we're, how we're getting out of the penalty box, which, as I told you, has not been decided yet and not written yeah. in these rules, as you can see. So, Blake's um, play, going to have to stop no matter what. So, okay, got it. Right. Hey, Brad and Taylor Lewis, I have like a question. Moving. Okay. Go ahead. Brad, it's Taylor. Um, so, out when we were doing this over the summer, right at the two-minute mark, the player was just coming back on the field. But say we have a timeout and it's a minute 45, are we going to let them back in or are we going to wait till exactly the two minute mark even if, you know, play doesn't stop playing. for another minute or two minutes? Uh, it's two minutes of playing time, but like I said, let's not even get into the conjecture of how we're going to bring the person back in because that hasn't been decided yet. And um, I, like I said, they're going to make a decision at UVA of how they're going to do it there. Um, but I want to get it in writing before we even start conjecturing that, okay? Um, and I think that the safest thing to do as of right now would be for you guys that are involved in the clinic. We will do these in the clinics. Um, if you're doing match games and stuff, right, stuff like that right now, um, until we get an answer about how we get out of the penalty box, just continue to use the red flags and then we will we will give you that answer as soon as we get it from the rules committee. Okay? That's the best I can do at this point in time, guys. So, hey, hey Bradley, uh, Bradley, this is Tom. It might be fit, it might be good to share that this was basically an outdoor format that was uh, uh, in 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 an attempt to keep continuity between outdoors and arena. The rule was passed for us as well. But the actual format is based off of outdoors. That's correct, and that's why, and that's why we're, and that's why we're, we haven't, that's why we haven't come up with the idea yet of 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 what's the best course of action in terms of bringing a person out of the penalty box. So, but thank you, Tom. Yeah, you're right. So, um, hey, Bradley, it's Cindy. I have I have a general question, and this may be a stupid question, but 2007. So these are the 2017 rules. Um, the II season starts the September 1st of 2016. Are we adopting these rules for the entire II season? Or is, yes. this, a, is this a calendar year? Yes, no, this is, yes, this is the, yeah, the II season. Okay. January. Um, we, may, we might want to, I'm just thinking we might want to clarify that just by calling them the, the new 2017 rules. Maybe they should be the new rules for 2016-2017. The new rules. 2016-2017. Okay. Okay. I, I, I have another comment, and I know you said you haven't figured out how to let the person back in, but theoretically, I assume that you're not going to stop play um, you know, at two minutes, if because that could be a disadvantage to a team that is about to score a goal. And so theoretically, that person in the penalty box could it could be much longer than two minutes before they're out. See that that's that's the big that's the big conjecture right now. That's the big that's the big thing right now that we're all trying to figure out. And that's that's that was what that's what, what was originally brought. We have to do more research on it because there's there's I, I don't want to get into that right now because we don't have an answer yet. So um, and you know there's 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 been talk on on doing it two different ways, and um, as I said, other than those of you that are going to go to UVA and make a decision there, the rest of you that are still just playing your games, don't use this until we give you an answer in terms of what or the rules committee gives us an answer of how you're going to get people out of the penalty box because it's very important. Um, so, and like I said, that is that is where. And that's how I've been ordered to answer this at this point. So, okay. 
Any other questions regarding the rules changes? Because that is pretty much, oh, the other thing is, uh, and this is a very small one, and I believe, give me just a second, guys, I lost my computer. Um, Hey Bradley, Sorry. I have a question about the mounts. Bradley, if you when you get to it, I, I have a question about the. I'm I'm assuming that's a change because it's in red for the mounts. Okay, I right. just give me just give me just a minute. Just give me just a minute. Let me do this one first. The first one. Uh, um. The first one, guys, is that is it's under under penalties, which is. Uh, it's just under penalties. Rule nine. Rule nine. Yeah. Rule nine. Um, penalty five A and five B are now switched. Uh, where five A used to be a center, um, now it's this is really more lingo for the umpire. Um, five uh, A is now a spot hit. Five B is now a center hit. And that that goes in line with the uh, <clears throat> with the outdoor rules as well. That's all being that's being changed as well. So that's just more of a technical thing than anything else. What's up, uh, Tom? What do you got for mounts? Uh, just that it was added in that uh, under mounts and equipment that a mount can be. Uh, to be in improperly conditioned in accordance with the uh, body scoring, is that something? Would anybody see that happening? Are, are you as umpires? Is that something that would happen? We I know we have our system, but is that something that would happen during a game that two umpires could look at you and tell you that your horse is too fat or too skinny? Um, we have been trained as umpires in the body conditioning scores. Um, you know, it's more of an. Of, uh, technically, you're right, but but what the the advice I would give to the umpires is report it to the tournament manager and and make a decision going from like regular season game. You know about regular regular instead of like instead of the II. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I'm just thinking it's in the rules now, so. Are the two umpires? Yeah. Well, actually, technically, the field. answer is yes. Then yes, we as umpires have been we have we have umpires have been have been uh, trained in the body condition as professional umpires have been trained in in the body conditioning score and yes, we do have a right. If we determine a horse to be you know too skinny or too fat. We can't have the horse removed. So, Bradley, I have a I have a question about the five A and five B. Okay. Bradley, I have a question about yeah. the 5A and 5B. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Cindy. Okay. In the in the description of it, it looks like it's just a switch of, uh, you know, nomenclature that a center hit is now a 5B and a spot hit is a 5A. But in the interpretation, it says a penalty uh, 5A which is a spot hit, should be awarded for minor instances that occur no closer than 25 yards from the goal that the foul team is attacking. It must be placed no closer than 25 yards from that goal. It sounds like the spot hit can now be closer than midway. Is that correct? That's in the, tur that's, that's in the tournament conditions, dear. That's not in the rules. That's in the tournament conditions. Okay? No, it's, it's the, in the rules. The, the, in the, it's in the rules that I was given that I that got sent out in the new rules. It's page. Yeah. It's the page right after five. It's page right after the five A five B. Yeah, this is this is Megan. It, it it looks like it's in the rules. She is correct, but it's supposed to be when the tournament conditions are used to eliminate the penalty four B. That's a four B. Yeah, we don't even. When the arena rules subcommittee was going to have a spot hit in the short short end of the arena, 4A was going to be for the 25 and a 4B from the spot uh, short end of the arena. And by swapping the 5A and 5B, it eliminated the penalty 4B. 
So, so, a five, so a 5A can then be closer to the goal than midfield? Only when the tournament conditions are used, and that interpretation seems to work. Are you making me confused? 5A is which? 5A can be in the front of the which you used to know, 5B in the corner, 5 yards. Off the end one, 5 yards off the sidewall is now a 5A. Guys, please put your phones on mute if you can. Um. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm just, maybe I'm being stupid. I'd, I'd... Explain it one more Cindy, time, Steve, please. Cindy, this, really quick, this, Cindy, this Megan, really quick. I agree. I, I'm confused, too. The other thing I was wondering is if it can be inside the 25, because it doesn't say 25 yard line, it says within 25 yards of goal. So there can be a ball placed inside the 25 yard line. Are you saying that, that anything in the, pur I mean the purple, I mean it's, it's in this interpretation, it's, I know that the interpretations are a different document, Steve. I know that that's a completely different document, but I, I this, appears, the interpretation appears to contradict what the rule says. That's yeah, where I'm let me, confused. Let me, yeah, the tournament conditions were originally put in the rule, and then the tournament conditions were pulled out. This interpretation was not pulled out. So this interpretation should be pulled out? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. Thank you. Okay, that's, all I need, that's all I needed to know then. That's what I, that's, that was not clear. Thanks. But now, uh, in the same token, a penalty 5A will be in the long end of the arena with a spot hit in the 5B. But the uh, hey, Steve, why, Steve, why was that done? Why were they flipped? 5A because, and 5B? Because when tournament conditions are used, you can have a 5A in the short end of the arena. And remember, yeah. we talked about a penalty 4A being from the 25 and a penalty 4B being from the spot in the short end of the arena, then we still had a 5A and we still had a 5B. So by swapping these, it did two things. It made us in line with every other rules in the world, a 5A and a 5B. Every uh, HPA, AAP has a 5A from the spot, 5B, and our outdoor rules will next year. So also by doing this in the arena, it eliminated the penalty 4B. I don't even... It's under, it's regarding the tournament conditions, guys, I, I apologize for the format of these rules, but that uh, we will just just know that based on the regular rule, 5A is now a spot hit, and a 5B is now a center hit. Okay, I will discuss the tournament conditions in a minute. Okay, so. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. So. Well, no, I, I disagree. Uh, we're not getting ahead of ourselves because that, you know, what that's what yeah, yeah, it's, it's, you're right. Given. It says it in there. Yeah, it, needs to it says there. it in there, and it needed is. And so the question is, is there anything else that was printed out as the rule that should be that should be crossed out of, of the interpretation, well, Steve? I mean, is there something? Is there anything else that because I know the formatting was difficult, but is there anything else that's going to confuse me later when I look at it? Uh, no, well, let not. me, Cindy let, Cindy, let me add to Rule 5, uh, Bradley, uh, right along with Cindy saying, Rule 5 on the uh, Section F, for some reason that um, line is in blue and it's crossed out. Was there any action taken on that or not? Under, under Rule 5, F. F is in print. In, in my copy I'm looking at, it's in blue and it's crossed out. But it's it's in the rules, well, the 2016 rules. But I didn't know if you guys is that just a mistake or is that is that a, is there gonna be a change on that? It's just taking, it, is this 5S in the judgment as to whether a ball went out of play or was put in play before or after the horn is the umpires? Is that right? Correct. Or is, or is Correct. It something different? Correct. Yeah. Steve can, you, Steve, can you help me on that? Is that just being taken out? Yeah, can you repeat that? Because I was trying to get through the rules. Uh, it's 
rule five. It's under rule five and F. Um, length and number of periods that's being taken out. It's the judgment as to whether a ball went out of play or was put in play before or after the horn is the umpire's. And that's in the rule book, Steve. So I'm not sure if that's just uh, was a was an error or if I, or I if think that's probably an outdoor rule that just got put in there. It doesn't make any sense in the arena. Because you you start the arena, this bowl in at the middle at the beginning of the truck there anyway. And then well, it's, no, out, it's, it's, it's out. actually so, Tom Tom, it's actually in the sixteen arena rules. Not I'm not saying you're not right, but it's in the two thousand sixteen arena rules. Right. I'm saying it's like a blood in there, no one caught it and now it's being taken out because to me it doesn't make any sense in the arena. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Because with the 30 seconds on the graph, if you bowl that ball in before the horn, it's in play. You bowl it in after, it's sent in the chucker. Or if out, meaning a knock-in or, um, you know, depending on if uh, sidelines or whatever. And so, again, I think this is probably just cleaning up in the mistake yeah, of their last year. Yeah, I think, I think Tom's right. I can't, I'm trying to, Steve or Bradley, I can't think of a situation or anybody else. Uh, I think Tom's right. That might have been a... Uh, a laundry item. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Uh, yes, it was. That's why. It was okay. Right. All right, guys. Any other? Uh, you know, like I said, I apologize for the formatting of this thing. Um, I know that Lindsay is. Lindsay Ezerbach is working hard on getting the format correct. Um, so uh, those are the base. Those are the rule changes. Um, Steve, since you're on, I, that's pretty much it in terms of the actual rules changes. Correct. Well, what about penalty ten? Penalty ten doesn't exist. Okay, so, so you still have to go through the flags. Is that how you get like kick somebody out? That's correct. Yeah, if you get uh, even a red flag, which you're out for the rest of the game, there's two-minute penalty box, and then your substitute can come in. All right. I just was curious because now it's all crossed out. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Now, you can get two yellow flags on one play. So you can do a two-minute penalty box for a very dangerous play. Keep going, Bradley. You're doing okay. a good job. Okay. Um, all right. Let's go into these uh, the other document, which was the tournament conditions. Um, that uh, you know, and um, as I have talked to a number of you on the phone, um, obviously there's been a lot of discussion with these tournament conditions. Um, as I have told all of you. Um, uh, we are going to try these in the uh, clinics. Um, you know, I, I would prefer us to try these um, as these are your clinics. Um, you have the discretion to do do that, um, but we would encourage it. And after these clinics are over, we are going to make uh, we are going to take note. We are going to have a conference call. We are going to do a lot of things. Um, before any decision is made one way or the other. Um, and so let's go over them. Um, and really they involve uh, starting with rule six, um, the scoring, um, a ball, and it's really under, under A2, uh, a ball hit on or beyond the 25 yard line which scores directly or off the wall but not off the roof structure and without being touched by any mount or any player other than one original hit by the striker shall count two points. Now what we will probably, uh, in conjunction with that, guys, and I'm going to go over to my little uh, handy dandy uh, handy dandy screen here. Um, 
what I would re request to help us out with this when we go to these clinics. Um, if this is this up here is the goal, and this down at the bottom is a goal is the goal. Um, in the middle, we really only need a straight line or a T if you want to, um, because obviously it's not as imperative uh, because that's not where the two point line is. Um, you obviously have your your 15 yard line with an arc. And then you're going to have the 25-yard line with an arc, but the 25-yard line now needs to go all the way across. Hmm. Okay. So that way, we, if the ball is on or beyond the 25-yard line, um, excuse my penmanship, it's not the best, but uh, but. Um, that will help. That will assist the umpires in knowing, and also what we will probably. Uh oh. <laughs> what did I do? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Don't click that. Yeah. Click that. And also, what we will probably do, um, and you know, coaches, I don't know how you feel about this, especially for these clinics. Maybe we take a player, since we have enough teams coming, take a player and put one a piece on the 25 um, to assist with that, um, you know, treating them basically like another goal judge. Um, does everybody seem to be okay with that? I, have no I idea. think that would work, but also if you're going to use, but if you're going to, I know you you try to use spotters like at nationals. Maybe the spotters sit there, and they're the they're the the old third man who used to tell us if that was a two pointer or not. That'd be oh, one way to do it if you go to that spotter situation. That's for the for the clinics. Since we're trying these for the clinics, we have umpires, so we're gonna have extra right. umpires. So we'll just use the umpires to do it. So there you go. Yeah. Brad, that solves that. Now, Brad, I have a question Dude. on on the language. It says a ball hit off on or beyond. What is is it fifty percent on? Is it any part of the ball on? You know, I can see that any part of the bowling. Any part of the ball. It's right now. You you technically, uh, Bradley. I know probably not everyone's going to agree with this, but technically, you could instead of the goal person being up above the goal, which I know is a good view of the goal mouth. But technically, that person could be on the 25-yard line watching the goal. Most of the rings are pretty small. You could be watching the goal and the line. If you were hard-pressed for personnel, uh, the flagger might be able to reposition there, maybe. I think it's probably more important right. to have a goal judge looking at the goal and let the umpires, if you're really short-staffed, personally. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, I actually agree with that. But let's you know, that's this is this you know, obviously we're you know, as of right now I'm looking at it as, as the four clinics that we're doing. Um yeah, but if yeah, if you want to try these because the thing you try these rules, but yes, I would say you leave it to the discretion of the umpire in terms of uh, I think the goal judges need to stay where they are and we'll leave it to the discretion of the umpire whether or not it's a two pointer or not. So um So are these my, only are these only plays from the field, or these are penalty threes and fours as well? No, this is this is this is from the field. Okay. okay. We'll get to the penalties in just a minute. Um. All right, now let's go to the penalties. Let's go to let's go to let's first of all let's go to the to to the. Okay, penalty four now. Uh, with these new tournament conditions is two points. Uh, penalty three, even though a penalty three is at the same line as a penalty four, um, it is considered one point. Okay, penalty two is also one point. All right. Um, and the penalty four is the only one that is defended. If you remember when we talked in the summertime, there was a lot of discussion back and forth about defending 
different penalties, but we decided that the best thing was to leave it as is, and the penalty four is the defended penalty shot. Okay? Um, Can I ask a question, and this might be weird, but if a end of the game you award a team a penalty three and they're down by two, could they say, I'd rather have a penalty four? No. And that's something we'll talk about. Tie it? That's forward. No. That's, because I think, no. It's, I think it's ridiculous because, you can score more points on a because, less than because, foul. Yeah, because, um, and part of what we'll get to um, in just a minute, uh, I'll I'll explain. I, I well, might might clear up some of that, but uh, but no. As of as of no, no, you cannot. There is no there is no selection of penalties from a standpoint of of the coaches or players. So it's what the umpires call. Okay. Um, so we are, are we encouraging <laughs> players to make more dangerous fouls that they're up by two with thirty seconds left. I'm playing devil's advocate here, but that to me slippery slope that we don't want to get on. So that you force well, them a penalty three or even a penalty two, and then they don't have the chance. You know, that's, again, that's, I, I hope that doesn't happen, but I can see it very easily happening. And this is, and this, and like I said, guys, I, I, I this is part of the, this is, this is part of the process, but this is what we're going with now, okay? Um, this is, these are things that can be discussed in the future, so, um, and then Bradley, this is Megan regarding that 5A, which is now in the field of play. So couldn't that be also, if I'm, is that, is that still also something that can be placed either right inside the 25 or right outside the 25? Uh, 5A, if it's, if the attacking team has the 5, if the, if the attacking team has the 5A, it can't be played inside the 25, it has to be beyond the 25. Yeah, it just doesn't say that at the 25-yard line, it says 25 yards from goal, which is different than 25-yard line. And it should be the 25-yard line. We need some I mean, housekeeping on that one. Yes. Can I help with that? Um, yeah, it should say outside the 25-yard line. And the reason for that, Megan, is we have a bowl in, then you have a little rinky dink off in one foot, the short side of center line. Well, to make that penalty a penalty four and have it count as two points was too severe. And that's why the 5A was moved to a spot hit. Now you can have a 5A in the short end of the arena, but outside the 25. Anything that happens inside the 25 is either a three or a two. So when we come right. back. Right, and, and I'm. Yeah, and I'm just one of those very technical people that 25 yards from goal can still be inside the 25-yard line. If you're talked about that, but I think it says outside, or we're, we're going to change it to outside the 25-yard line. Because you're okay, not. Yeah, because okay, yeah, because the interpretation I think that Cindy was talking about, the one that might have been mismatched, is that one says 25 yards from goal, and everything else says beyond the 25-yard line. So that's just a technical thing. Yeah, no, it's right. beyond 25. You can't have a uh, uh, 5A inside the 25. You can't have a penalty four inside the 25 either. It's either a three or a two. Okay. So oh, right. five, if you guys, if you guys, if you guys, if you guys heard what Steve said, if, if a foul occurs inside the 25-yard line, on the wall, in the arena, anywhere, um, it cannot be a penalty four. It will be a penalty two or a three. Um, I know that's going to change a little bit because I know there's been some plays along the sidewall before where we've talked about penalty fours, but um, per, you know, as, as you know, Two points is two points, and it's more. Um, it was determined by the committee that any foul that occurred inside the 25-yard line going in any direction would be considered a two or a three, okay? Not a four. Um, and then in getting back with what Steve was discussing about the 5As um, and the 5Bs, 
Um, if 5A, you know, as a ticky tack foul, as he said, um, and possibly not going into the direction of the goal, if it's determined it's a 5A spot hit, uh, obviously it's a, it's a two-point play, but it is the, the the players will line up in conjunction with how you lined up line up on a center hit or a hit behind behind center line where the player has to be 16, uh, 16 yards away from you know directly you know not directly in front of the hitter far I mean closer than 16 yards um, and you know everybody else can line up just like they do on a center hit or a spot hit like, like, like we've always had so um, does everybody understand that? The same thing. So, um, okay. Now, let's talk about procedure with uh, the ball coming off of the wall. Um, first of all, first of all, the one the one that we can just go ahead and say is that if a ball is uh, if a penalty two, three, or four is hit and um, the ball goes over the end wall. I know some of you just have walls all the way up. I know some of you have end walls at the ends of your arena. It goes over the end of the arena, um, over the end wall. It will, it will be a spot hit for the other team. Okay, just like all of our other spots. Um, and then if now, this, let's go through. Any questions on that? Uh, Bradley, can I, can I make just one comment on that? I think we're trying to obviously the encouragement here behind some of this is to get the players to hit away. You know, to 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 go for those. You know, two pointer at the twenty five being proposed. That's trying to get them to hit away. And you know, we're talking about maybe taking away that play to the right. We want them to hit away. They're going to get two points. It's kind of contradictory. If we try to encourage them to hit away, that ball is going to be going over the end line more often, and then that's a turnover to the other team. Can you see how that – we're all doing this together. That's a little bit in conflict with itself. Does that make sense? We I want to hit away. I, I, it, I mean, we're still teaching them to hit away, but, you know, the fact of the matter is that they – I mean – you have an end wall and it goes over the end wall. I mean, it's you're you're not really giving. Here we are giving an advantage to the defensive team if you if the ball bounces off the end wall. But if it goes over the end wall, now you're going to throw the ball in and it's a 50-50 ball. So the idea the, was the, the attacking like, team. You're trying to get the attacking team to hit that goal, which they're going to, and they're 15 feet high or should be. So the balls are going to go up more if you're if you're going to take a stronger shot at goal. The ball's going to go up more and out more. So we're going to, we're trying to encourage them to take those shots, but now the other team it's it's going to go out more, you know, more than it's going to go on the goal. It's going to go out, and then the other team takes the ball. You, I just think we should think about that a little bit going forward. That's all. Just well, let's comment. just test, let's, let's let's test it and see how it fits and and and. Maybe and maybe we'll go back to it. So um, now let's talk about the end wall in terms of the bounce off. Okay, if the ball is hit on a penalty two, three, or four, um, and the ball is missed to the left or to the right and hits the end wall and bounces off, a defender, uh, a player on the defending team has the right to the ball first, okay? Um, meaning that if the ball comes off the wall, it, it, it does not, there, there is no designated player that, that has to go to the ball. Uh, it is any defending player, and they have the right to the ball first to make a play. And making a play is either tapping the ball or hitting away. All right, um, and <clears throat> and the offensive team cannot 
defend that player. In other words, if you attempt to go and hook that player on that first play, or if you go to bump him or her, or if you, ten, if, or if you attempt to stand in front and block his shot or his or her shot, that is considered defending a player, and if you do so, you will be there will be the 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 defending player will be awarded a center hit or more severe penalty based on umpire discretion. Now, all the other players, all the other players in the arena may be covered. It's only the player. So the offensive player, the offensive team can go to the other defending players. It's only the defensive player that goes to the ball that cannot be covered. Okay, and, then, and, and at, at the time that the first play occurs. All right. Is that what? Is that within the 15? So if one player is going to, that, to get that, that ball within, that in is, the 15 yard line. That is, that is within the 15 yard line. If the ball bounces out, if the ball bounces out. Outside of the 15-yard line, the ball becomes live for both teams. Okay, and the, you know, if the ball bounces out at a specific angle, and that become and comes out of the 15, that becomes the line of the ball. Okay, but it's considered a live ball. So, in other words, so my question, Bradley, line, is if if that if the defending player now is going to the ball, then you're other defending players who are not going to that ball go in into the 15. Into the 15, can you defend those players within the 15, or are all those players yes, yes, yes. outside the 15 till hit? Oh yes, you can defend those other players that go into the 15. Yes. Is there That's a line? Language, the language. We might. And how we are might. you going to determine if you've got two players on the same team? Lesser angle. In terms of in terms of making a play, yeah, right. What if you have what if you have two defending players going in? Let's say they, they they're not uh, they're not paying attention, and you've got two going in. Steve, you want to help me with that? That's a good question. Yeah, I think we need a designated um, player on the on the defending team. No, we didn't. We left out designated player because uh, in some of the slower polo, it might take too long, and that's why I must make a play immediately, and that's a team play. And if not, it's a delay of game. So as long as they're making an effort, just like somebody clearing the line when the ball's put underneath them, as long as they're making an effort to go and make a play, then that's considered playing the ball immediately. And that's going to affect the flow of you know a, a good girls game compared to a slow minus two goal game. So everything is effort. It's a judgment call, just like any other play. Is that do we need a line judge at the 15-yard line now too? Uh, I think Lou and, and we've talked about that in the second second chucker and the fourth chucker, um, where those lines are very messed up. It should be like the outdoor. Any benefit of the doubt shall go to the defending team. So if we have no lines, the flooring and the footing is bad, and the ball might have went 16 yards, you know what, the defending team better get the benefit of the doubt. Now, the good thing about it, though, too, is, guys, we will, I mean, well, I mean, if you have, even if one or two umpires, they're more likely they're going to be lined up down there at the 15 or the 25, and we'll be able to, uh, to be pretty accurate on that. But that is it. And if you attempt to make a play, and you know, if you go to hit, try to hit the ball, and you and you whip it, or you know, uh, it it it's it's live ball, it's anybody's ball inside the 15. So, um, but the idea was to have, give the defender the first right to hit the ball, so everybody would shoot at goal. Hi, this is Megan. I, I'll just go back to kind of what I was talking about a couple months ago. You know, it's great for all the people that are on this call, but what about all the coaches of teams or teams without a strong full-time coach that aren't on this call and they come to these games, they might be going into fouls 
not really understanding the rules. So are there going to be kind of a rules review for all these teams going into these clinics? That's Megan. This this call this call is being record is being recorded. It will be sent to all the coaches to to get on the call and listen to it. You know, you you got to take some responsibility as a coach to to uh, to get on the you know listen to the recorded call. So if you know that's, yeah, no, that's, I'm just that's, saying. I'm I guess I'm my thing is the, it's the sixth. It's the sixth of October. And we're talking about things that start in two weeks, three weeks. I mean, yes, there's personal responsibility, but there's also, you know, giving people enough time to do this. Remember, a lot of people, it's not their full-time job. Well, hey, Megan, I know at the clinics they will be explained again before any game is started. I can't speak for anything else, but I can speak for the clinics. So, but cause, well, the umpires will have to go back over it anyway. So I'm sure not every umpire is on this call either. I think the umpires well, can there, step there, in and help them there, out quite a bit before the games. Well, and this is being proposed, so we have a number of tournaments coming up. And correct me if I'm wrong, Bradley, but there's four tournaments coming up this fall that we're going to experiment with all of this. And uh, so there should be quite a bit of exposure um, because it's it's not Bradley. It's not mandated that the fall games. You know the match games that people are having uh, are obviously not mandated to use this. So we'll, we'll get all the fall tournaments to get the feedback, right? And get start circulating. That that is correct. Our community. Yes. But aren't these the tournament conditions? So aren't they kind of in place right now for the season? Like these aren't no. uh, proposed tournament conditions, or I thought these were approved by the board. Yeah. These were approved by the board, Tom, but they're tournament conditions. But any, you know, you can you can choose or not choose tournament conditions. It's just like the uh, international. It's the uh, it's like the uh, international rules. Same kind of thing. Yeah, but these are the II tournament. I haven't. We haven't changed them ever. No, no, no. These are not, these are not II tournament conditions. These are turn. These are arena tournament conditions. Okay. Oh, I not II. So we sent over the II ones. Like it, sorry. So, okay, that, that's fine. I thought well, maybe I, I, this was the I, 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 I might have titled it the wrong way. I'm sorry, but it's it's arena tournament conditions is what it is. So, so. Oh, so you don't have to. No, play no, like no. It sent out the potential to the tournament conditions earlier too, but okay, that okay, that clears it up then. That's fine. Okay. So they're not really potential arena tournament conditions. They are. They are. They are. They're, they're, they are they're potential for II, for but they are tournament. Okay. Yes, they are tournament conditions for the arena in 2017, which means that if you, it, it, we're not talking about II. If you have an arena tournament in 2017, and you you want to use these rules, you have to apply for a variance if it's a USPA tournament through the USPA to use them. So if we're II and we're basically a qualified, any qualifying game is an is a, an approved USPA. It's not a tournament, but it's a, it's a it's a game. Do we have to apply for? I mean, yes, we. And well, the II has applied for a variance uh, for the clinics uh, to use these tournament conditions for games that count. And, but what, what, if we use, if some of these games are played under these tournament conditions, and other games are, pl and, and and these count for for seeding, for qualifications, and other games are played, I mean, the scores could be completely different based on on these rules. If you played a game and you you played the exact same game with the exact same plays, that score could be completely different. And that and that those scores are going to be used under both sets of rules and at these at these umpire clinics. And I understand, Bradley, we want to we want to try them out when in a controlled situation. I get that, but some of these some of these teams will be using these. These games are going to count for them, and they're going to count going into the season. And if they're played under one set of rules and other games are played under other set of rules, it's like you know you're you're judging team results or game results from two different scoring scenarios. 
and 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 it really makes i mean for some of these regions it may make i mean i don't know but it may make a huge difference if there's games that are very close games and one team wins you know with two points from the 25 is a huge difference and and it's it's meant i understand it's meant to to get these games opened up but I, i'm just that's that's what concerns me and i know that you know we're trying to go through the conditions but this is a it's a huge to me it's a huge issue and i think it's a huge issue for a lot of people and I, you know, I agree we need to go through these things, but the, just you saying we may decide to use these for the rest of the year is a big red flag. Pardon the, pardon the use of red flag, but it's just, so that's, that's what, that's my concern. Or two yellows, as it were. <laughs> Well, it's, it's up to you guys in the clinics. It's up to the teams to agree to it. Um, I am, you know, as I, I can't sit here and tell you guys that, you know, it's not going. It's that I can't sit here and tell you honestly that it's not that that there's not going to be a discussion about using them for 2017. And I don't know how to sugarcoat that any better than than what I can. I will tell you that. The, the informed decision, as much as possible, will be made, um, and you all will have significant input into it. Um, and uh, as I said, this is this, that's up to the clinics, that's up to the teams um, in terms of agreeing to do this. I know that a number of these teams can't get to certain places, and these places, these are the only place, the only times they can they can get there but you know the other side of it too is guys and girls is that you know this might be our best and only chance I mean I'm I'm we may not have these clinics next year so this might be our best and only chance to do this so um, you know we may not there may not be on for a vetting pro a vetting process I mean, as much as we want a vetting process there may not be one next year so um, that's why I'm kind of saying let's let's do this but as I said, in terms of the games account, that's going to be up to the teams and going to be up to the, cl the clinics to administer it that way. You have two options. Hey, Bradley. Hey, what Bradley, are the, these, these, what are the these four what tournaments, are the Bradley, are, are these collegiate or, or are these scholastic? These are all collegiate, correct? Before the four both. Oh, no, there are going to be some interscholastic games at some of the clinics, too. I know, but Megan, okay. I think you've got some, right? And Midland, too, I think. So. When, when are the clinics completed? Uh, November the... <clears throat> it's always the week before Thanksgiving. David Eldridge's is always the last one at Cornell, which is... The, yeah, okay. The, so why, don't, why don't we make point. that as a date? Why don't we make that as a date to make a decision that we either use them or don't? Because I agree with Cindy. Well, we, we're gonna, we actually are giving a longer time than that, so to determine to determine them. Yeah, the decision actually was going to be made by December the first. So, okay, so that's um, that's good. Okay. So everybody has plenty of time to give their feedback. So, so up to December first, we all use one goal uh, for those beyond twenty fives, and beyond that, we figure it out. Well, up to yeah, up to the like I said, up to the, the clinics are your choice. Okay, I'm not saying that you have to use these tournament conditions. It's your choice, but we would encourage that. So, we would encourage that. Um, anyway, that's it with the rules. I have uh, interscholastic I have score sheets are all all interscholastic games have to be completed by January 12th. And if you take out if you've got Christmas vacation. So you've got a 12 weeks of polo before the potential rule change and four weeks of polo, or five weeks maybe after. Um, I, who, I'm Bradley, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I know I'm, I'm being, I'm being the, the bad guy here, but who, who made the decision? I, I'm confused of which committee does what, okay? Pretend I'm stupid. Um, maybe you don't have to pretend even. But which committee decided that, that there was that we would potentially use these rules during the II season. Is it the rules the committee? committee? Is it the arena committee? The is it the NHC, II committee? No, the NHTC. 
NHT said. Really? <laughs> okay. okay. I'm not getting to my opinion because I want to fight this. That's that's for that's that's for another day. Um, uh, the only other only other thing I want to make sure everybody was clear upon is that you know with the penalty four being a two pointer, um, if the ball ball, well, give me just a minute. All right. If I just remember that on a penalty four, if if the, is, is it being a two pointer, if the goal is scored directly or off the wall, but not off the roof structure, or after contact with the defender's mallet, body, or mount, it shall also count as two points. And the reason we we decided on that was because the defenders already already uh, were already in the goal mouth, um, and so it was we determined that it was not in the best interest to take away a two-pointer if, if it deflected off of his body or horse if he's in the goal mount, okay, um, with the intent of it going in. So. That's only for that's a penalty. Easy. What about a 5A that's out 26 no, yards? No, 5A is different because a 5A, if the ball... If the ball is, as it stands right now, loop a pony 5A, if the ball bounces off a horse or a mallet or the player, it is it goes from two points to one point. That's the rule. That's the condition. I shouldn't say rule. That's the condition. So. As that's it from my standpoint in terms of the tournament conditions, um, I'm going to open it up for about two or three more questions, and then we're going to we're going to we're going to shut it. We're going to shut this off. So, um, you know, I, this this is a lot, guys. But once you know, we get to these we get to these clinics, um, you know, and uh, we get to these clinics, and if you want to use them, you know, in your match games outside of these clinics. Um, You just, you know, if you have questions, you know, I have an email. Um, so uh, at the clinics, obviously, we will be, we will be there to to help instruct and move this along. So, um, any other questions? I have a question on the penalty four um, that you were just talking about. The if the goal is scored directly or off the wall, but not off the roof structure, after contact with the defender's mallet body or mount, it shall count as two points. Is that and that yeah. that's only when the defender's in the goal. Correct. Maybe that should add that, that the defender is is the yeah that the, the with the defender's mouth body or mouth that's in the goal. Okay, two points. Or within within what is it uh, three yards five yards of the goal. In an arc. Yes. So they could be they could be out a good a good bit from goal, and it could still hit their horse and then go in, and it would still be two points. They're considered they're considered the defender. It's, ball, it's, I think it's if the ball. See, I think the original intent of this was if the ball was going to go in, and the player deflected it with body, mallet, or horse, it shall count as two points. Correct. Yes, that is correct, and the reason for that was because if, if it was not going to be counted, then we didn't solve anything by the players hitting the ball to the right of the goal. Unless uh, we didn't. I got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Coming back to Lou's question, um, the reason we didn't do it on the penalty 5A um, or an open field is because we have a hard enough time determining maybe the ball nicked the right front leg of the defender in the goal or not. So, the benefit of the doubt in that case from the shooting team, but in the other cases, the benefit of the doubt to the team. It takes some umpire discretion away. 
Oh, we, always, we always did it for the center heads, but that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. And it might need tweaking after some testing. Bradley, would you mind if I made a comment here at the end? Sure. Anybody, does anybody else have any questions? Well, I don't want questions. I was just going to make a comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, just, I just would remind everybody of the process that, uh, you know, the, the arena rules subcommittee came up with what is written for the tournament conditions. So I think if you want to ask about what games or anything to do, I think that has to go to the II committee. Um, and, and I agree with Tom Goodspeed about hitting the ball on a free hit afterwards, and I brought that up for the subcommittee, but um, it was outvoted, which is okay. But uh, because it does make more of a ticky tack game, so when we say that we need to look at that, um, I think as a committee we need to look at that, but not Bradley or any individuals. Um, there's some tweaking to be done. We've never written a rule which didn't need a little tweaking here and there. So we're in that process. There's a lot of changes, and we all have different opinions, and hopefully we can all come to a point and uh, get to the end of the fun. That's all I got, Bradley. Thank you, Steve. And with that process, they're scheduled to become rules in 2018, correct? With proper yes. testing and positive... With proper, uh, te with proper testing and vetting, yes. Yeah. Hmm. And maybe speaking. So we should probably give it the full year before we uh, decide to use them in our tournaments, right? Yeah, probably. You know, uh, that I think that depends on how many games you get in. Uh, uh, like I looked at uh, a two-minute bounty box. I bet it'll take you 45 games to even get a good study on that. Where uh, maybe the 15 yards, you know, whether it's 15, 15, 15 I say just your tournament next week. <laughs> so, you know, every, everything's a study. All right, guys. That's uh, all I have. I appreciate everybody getting on. Um, you know, any uh, you know questions? Email us, and uh, and I appreciate everybody taking their time out tonight. Uh, did you, Bradley? I know we've got the web webinar, and those of us that are on that are listed. But did we take any roll call of how many people called in? That weren't on the webinar. Uh, I think we had. Is that record? Do you guys keep, to, to give you a roll call? Yeah, we'll we'll get a roll we'll get a roll call, uh, Tom. So, um, I believe at one point I saw 19 or 20 attendees is what I saw. But, uh, Tom, they can they can look at the phone numbers and and I mean, uh, Allie, I think you've got a way of of figuring out who was on. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Okay, just was wondering, interested to know how, you know, what kind of like, what the, what the gals were expressing the uh, concern about, you know, how many, how the word's getting out, how many people actually did get on the call. Right. Okay, thanks. Thank you. And, once, and also remember, and we're going to send emails out once again, we'll send an email out again that this is recorded, but, you know, remind anybody that you see that, you know, this is recorded in, on Polo Skills. Uh, we'll probably send out a link. That'll be send out a link. Yeah, we'll, they'll send out the I will send out a link that'll that'll have this recording. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, everybody. You. I'll see some up in Virginia next week. And go watch the weather. <laughs>